complements the overall lighting of the spawn point. Okay. Hi, Finster Hoon. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Hi. Hi this is <laughs> Eric. Yeah, I knew you were Eric. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> You know, by your first, what it means. Is a, is, is, is a big fan of Eric, so we invited him. Okay, so first of all, why don't you actually come um, and enjoy the two paper beasts? We saw it on your okay. stream. That was very sweet. <laughs> I love so paper beasts so much. The, in, into, into here, into the building. Um, okay, so I will very quickly ask everyone a quiz question. Well, I mean, right, in all fairness, one of my quiz questions is when I'm giving this private tour is like, what's the name of the game where these two beautiful origami creatures are from? But it's a very obvious answer today, so it's Paper Beast. <laughs> but the second question is, what is the name of the film that inspired um, the staircase in our lobby? Any yeah. guesses? <laughs> the Shining. <clears throat> The shining very yeah, good guess you, you are winning a bottle of champagne but it's not the right answer but i'll, I'll take that as a second best <laughs> in fact the shining inspired the whole way inside uh, I'll, I'll show it to you so it's a grand staircase in a lobby that looks like a hotel grand budapest hotel Yes, you're winning a trophy. Nah, well done. Nah, <laughs> okay. So another thing that we are very proud of is that you can actually jump onto this paper beast and just jump inside the world as well. So let's go and have a little fun. And I'm going to show you my favorite spot here in the world, which actually is here, the top of this creature. Because <laughs> it's, nice. it's a beautiful kind of view from, from up This is my favorite it's spot too. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> oh. oh. No. Super cool. I failed. I failed Mr. I like Pleasant. Thorsten's avatar no, no, leaving the train. No it's so on. cool. Holes <laughs> can't fly, that's why. It is amazing, Commander. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so let's continue our tour. So, a little bit about the festival. So, as you know, we're a London-based festival. We are UK's and Europe's biggest independent film festivals. We have been around for 28 years. For the last um, five years, uh, we have been recognizing and rewarding VR projects, games and experiences, and recognizing creators as artists. And on these two boards, you see this year's 10 award nominations. Um, so shout out, I will start first with the Discovery Award, which is actually over here. And today we have the speakers from Rhythm of the Universe, Ionia. Can you, can you, yeah, thanks for making yourself known. That was, then, then we have Rinlow, Rinlow, we. Star Shaman, Star Shaman. And then Paper Beast has a uh, fair few nominations. So in here, outstanding achievement in art, outstanding achievement in audio, outstanding achievement in design, and over here, hey. best immersive game. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Four nominations in total, if I recall correctly. Thanks so okay, much. So Thank you so much. Is... <laughs> Pleasure. So next is our um, gallery corridor with all the 32 nominated projects. Um, and we kind of group them for color. And this is a combination of games and animated projects, but also world from inside here, from the outside. Too complicated Hello. for... Uh... No, 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 no. <laughs> this is the whole paper based team here. <laughs> Yes. Awesome. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, Florian <laughs> Y'all are so cool. I love you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Finster is uh, one of our biggest uh, fan. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Uh, I, I, so, uh, <laughs> I, yeah. Thank you for your support. It's no problem. You guys made my 2020. <laughs> cool. <laughs> The first time uh, I came here, it was uh, very uh, uh, strange because uh, suddenly you have an overbody. 
<laughs> which is not your you can change of uh, shape and uh, yes Clément you use the emoticon <laughs> yeah I'm trying out stuff but uh, yeah it's very uh, cyberpunk this whole stuff Florian, to change of your avatar, you can uh, do it uh, if you press the menu but button, you have avatar, and you can uh, choose uh, any of... Je sais pas qu'est-ce que... Ouais, c'est ça, comment tu fais pour choisir un truc là-dedans, là, en fait Eh ben... Tu cliques dessus, normalement... Et je crois que enfin, je sais pas trop, parce que je connais pas hyper bien l'interface non plus. Ok, everyone, I would like to propose to progress to the next room, and then yes. we will take pictures on the red carpet. Ok. Yeah. <laughs> then someone join us. Come, come, come. Well, we'll take pictures on the red carpet. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Donc j'ai téléchargé, j'ai plus payé. Ah, ça Merci, mais attendez, il nous dit, on t'aura envoyé une clé. Ah, bah non, on t'aura envoyé une clé. Ça fait plaisir. Ah, c'est super, merci. Si vous voulez une clé pour Pepper Beast, d'ailleurs, c'est possible. Ah, c'est ça, je l'ai déjà acheté sur PlayStation. Ok, bon, c'est vrai. Et dans les deux corridors, vous verrez des masques que vous pouvez prendre. Oh, and those are okay. from an experience called Maranga, oh, which is a very up? fun oh, multiplayer game. Oh, oh, you just you can just kind of like lift them, but you don't. <gasps> the really dog, lift them up. the <laughs> dog, <laughs> yay! The dog is here. I'm a dog. I love this dog so much. Do you want to be a dog? There we go. <laughs> Ah. Est-ce qu'on peut se les piquer C'est ça oh, la question. C'est un peu weird quand tu le piques. C'est comme les faces sur toi. Oui. Tu ne peux pas le piquer sur ta tête. Je ne peux pas le piquer sur ta tête. Je suis en train de faire que tout le monde est en train de faire. Clément, Clément, c'est un audio sound designer, audio integration, audio coder. Cheating, on Paper Beast. You know who this is, right? The, um, oh, yeah. the, um, the Witcher is one of my favorite things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 Unity Scroll Cloud. You can like go with it. Yes, right. Oh, well, yeah, it's fantastic to meet you. I'm a huge fan of Paper Beast. It was one of my favorite oh, VR games this year, so it's yeah, really special oh, to meet cool. you. It's really yours. Yours is nice, man. Yeah, the art direction is excellent. No, 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 it's really astounding. I like how minimal you keep it. It's really, really nice, man. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. We are. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't worry about yeah, like the launch tracking. Amazing adventure for us. Okay. Yeah, it was on this game. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool it's okay. Okay, yeah, everyone. I, think, yeah. Yeah. I remember. Let's go on the red carpet to take pictures. Eric Lott during our interview. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like yeah. Yeah. A, an, an amazing oh. journey. I really enjoyed the two avatars here. Beautiful. Yeah, I think we should do the colors on the red carpet. Yeah, come. Your avatar is pretty awesome as well. Building paper pieces. Current okay. technology, but you built it years ago, so yeah, really oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I feel more comfortable. Okay, yeah, let's do red carpet pictures. Do you want to, I can uh, present you. Yeah. Oh, yes, uh, Rolly. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Florian, we can Taking see your photo. avatar yeah. now. Excellent. Oh, okay. Excellent. Cool. That's a good Rory. news. Uh, Great <laughs> choice. Really good I can choice. We can also you, uh, hear you. We're going to go to the. Yep. Red carpet! Quite a trick. Maybe a new outfit by the end of the week, you know. <laughs> Le miroir! <clears throat> yeah. yeah and there's a mirror. There's a mirror here, yeah? I activate the mirror, uh, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> I know all the tricks. What just wow. happened to you? I think it's only for you, in fact, when you're in ah, tu, tu vois pas le miroir hein Tu vois pas les autres bah, moi, je en fait, je... bah, Si, parce que je l'ai activé pour moi, mais si je le désactive, bah tiens, attends. Tu le vois, tu, tu le vois toujours right. ou pas ah, Ouais, on va le voir. Bah c'est ça, en fait, c'est personnel. Wait, wait, where do you go Oh, there it is. Ok, donc vous pouvez venir un petit peu, et tout le monde peut prendre un petit peu de retour aussi. Ou des petits gens à l'arrière, donc... Ok, ça va. 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 Ok, ça va.
You're next to me. <laughs> <laughs> We're still next to Sorry. each other. Wonderful. Hey, Finster. Hi. Yeah, yes, Finster. Hey, Finster. hello. <laughs> Wait. And then everyone face this way. Oh, Jan, Jan. Oh. Yeah, cool. Okay, the banana looks great. Can <laughs> <laughs> I ask you to just take a step back? Perfect. Just one a step back, so you're yep. gonna get that here. composition and right. Huh? I can try. Can we have, can we have Mr. Butterstick? Maybe just that's a that's step great. back. That's little oh, step okay. back, here. and and to your left, just uh, to your. Hang on. Yeah, to your left. Perfect. <laughs> but perfect. Sorry, I just you know, activated safe right. mode. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Could you, could you wait a second? I activated safe oh, mode. Right. I have no idea how to get out of. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Uh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, this one was good. Yeah. Yeah. Rocking yeah. it. No, but I activated oh, safe yeah. mode. How do Feels I get great. out of it? Nah, I think it's uh, in safety. Cheese. <laughs> cheese. <laughs> Yo, you say cheese, you're really smiling. Oh, yeah, I'll come join you. Cheese. 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 Oh my god, this is endless. It would be a really good sound to record. Yeah, we should start a choir. Very well. <laughs> it's not a choir. Picture complete. Yeah, we're Yay! Going. Cool. Picture done. Oh. Nice. Pop. Okay. Pretty <laughs> <Fun spray. laughs> To the alcohol. <laughs> yes. Hello. Operation Olivier. So I have activated safe mode. And I don't know how to get out. Okay. Hi, Hey Amos, nice to I love your dress. This is amazing. That's amazing. Eric, this music is actually from Star Shaman, Yanzalo, and Olivier's game. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did the mix. I will play it soon. I got it this afternoon. Oh, nice. I'm amazed. I feel like I've never probably... I think there, there, is, a a there is a shaman out the there with the levitation. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> for me, Jin. Definitely yeah, Jin Martin. Yeah, so Eric, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm announce you on stage and then let's talk a little bit about you and how you got into like games. Because there's a lot of young yeah, games developers here, here which will find it inspiring. You want a drink? And then, awesome, thank you. Let's then specifically go through your... like whichever game Thank you. you. That's kind of dear to you. Whoa, then we can focus on paper beasts. Up. And then feel free to. We can invite your entire team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. And we can talk about the game as is, like from your perspective, and then from each individual team member's perspective, depending on their role. People who did art, people who did sound. And, and then we will let you know the questions. Yeah, see, this is really cool. <laughs> well, this is the first time I've actually uh, unmuted my mic in, in VR chat, so it's a it's a nice uh, <laughs> it's a nice change. And yeah, I am recording this whole thing because this is really important to me. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Ruby Star. I'm I'm the I'm the game director. <laughs> Yeah. So to kick off Eric's talk and Eric's wonderful theme talk, I will play the Paper Beast trailer, which will stop this music. And after the trailer, I will invite Eric on stage we and I will ask him a couple questions. <laughs> and then after that, we will invite all of Eric's team Let's on stage. Let's do it. Let's get in a fight. <laughs> so they can introduce uh, themselves and their individual roles on the project. And then. 
you guys can ask questions. We will have like um, a Q and A session. So I will start with the trailer, which I'm actually just just uploaded um, as we speak. Sounds good. C'était pas prévu, ça m'a fait un peu chier. Bon bah je je vais en profiter. Hein. <rire> Hey, Pascal. Hi. <laughs> Silently watching a music video. Bye, bravo! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, so I'd like to welcome Eric on stage now. Welcome, Eric. <laughs> Yay! Thank you for uh, coming uh, tonight, and thank you also to your Thanks team for, uh, for, 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 for joining. It's super, super exciting to, to have you and, and all of your team here tonight with us. Um, so Eric, um, there's obviously a lot of uh, great gaming, indie gaming talent here in this room. Um, and I'd like to first ask you, uh, how did you actually get into games and what was your journey into becoming a game designer? Tell us, tell us your kind of hum okay. humble beginnings. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a long journey because I started in 1983 and I was uh, 15 years old. And uh, it was the time uh, of 8-bit uh, computers uh, with uh, the ZX81, the Auric one, which was very famous in France. And um, so I learned uh, computer programming uh, at school because our math teacher teach uh, programming. And I really wanted at that time to be a game designer because I love arcade games. Uh, and um, and then I create uh, so it was in 1983 uh, during the, sum the, the summer of 1983 I got my first computer which was an Oric one and I got two games uh, so that's that's how I start and then uh, I um, create several games that was a uh, it was very local, ready on the um, national French market, which was uh, very small, not open to uh, any international uh, export for a game. And um, and then it started to open, especially with the uh, 16-bit computer like Amiga or Atari. And uh, at the end of the 80s, in 90. Uh, 99 um, have been involved in a game which was a future world and with uh, Delphin uh, software and that was the first game that go outside France for Delphin software and for me with Paul Cuisse and uh, and that was the, the, the really the, um, the 
the beginning of uh, well, the, the, how to say? I really it it was another uh, pages, another uh, chapter in my uh, gaming creation because all mm -hmm. the game before were um, uh, not really uh, mature in terms of uh, creation uh, quality and uh, and then. So this adventure game um, has been sold in USA and uh, in Europe and uh, it gives me the possibility to create another game uh, all by myself which is another world and, uh, so and I was programming from the beginning I was programming and creating graphics and, um, and for another world, I, I did it. But before another world, I stopped to programming for uh, maybe two years. Yeah. Mm. So and after uh, another world, uh, uh, time development becomes much more longer, and it's it's mm. curious to see that how um, time development changed because my first game was cr were created in a few months, and then. Another road, two years, Art of Darkness, six years, and uh, From Dust, uh, three, four years, and uh, Paper Beast, uh, four years, so... Oh, four years, okay. Yes, four years, <laughs> and, and uh, four years with and the team, but, mm -hmm. in and, but I start before uh, to do some ritual and research. Mm -hmm. Yes. And was Paper Beast conceived uh, from the very start as, as a VR game? Um, when we start with the team, we wanted yes, to create yes. a, a VR game. Uh, mm -hmm. but the, uh, the early prototype I made in 2D about the uh, locomotion in uh, maybe 2014. Uh, oh, 15. very early. <laughs> yeah, and, and, um, but I did some other uh, side projects. And um, it was uh, uh, only 2D, and the VR was rising with first uh, the first uh, Oculus that was uh, coming. But it's really the, uh, the HTC Vive <laughs> that changed my uh, vision of VR, um, because uh, you can really interact with the whole world and. Uh, and uh, I say, well, why not create a VR game about uh, wildlife? Mm -hmm. That was the, the starting point. And then how, how did you get your team together? So once you had the um, concept, uh, how did you the select the, the talent that has worked with you? Um, the, I, I made a game jam um, some years ago, a couple of years ago, and I meet uh, a part of the team, uh, the programming team, uh, and especially one guy who is, uh, his name is Francois Sailly, and we worked together on a Volcano project. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so with him and two and Seb and Olivier, we decided to build a team for this project. And uh, and then um, Pascal, I know who is the art director of uh, Paper Beast, and more than the art director indeed, because he did all the 3D model, the texture, and almost everything. And uh, we uh, met uh, at Ubisoft, and he worked on From Dust, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, Florian, uh, I met Florian. Uh, a long time ago, and uh, uh, on um, at Montpellier about his creation in sound design, and she came from the radio world, and uh, I was always um, very um, uh, captivated by, by her creation. Where uh, there is. She 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 loved all the natural stuff, and uh, she create texture around the. the uh, she works to love uh, sound, to work with sound texture. And when 
I was speaking of paper based. I uh, immediately thought of Florian to be a, a, a contributor on the audio uh, landscape. And, um, and then uh, Clément, uh, we, we were working in the same <laughs> place for maybe one year and without knowing we will work together and one day the project on <laughs> which he was working uh, stopped and uh, I was looking for um, someone to take care of uh, the audio, the integration with the wise en engine, engine and and uh, so that was really the, the good match uh, because uh, he uh, Clément uh, is also coding, he's uh, also uh, creating music, he's uh, a musician, and it was really the perfect uh, um, connection with Florian and with Rolly, and um, Rolly, we uh, indeed it's Fl Florian know uh, Rolly's uh, work and she's saying, hey, this uh, composer Look here, he, he, he could match very well the project, and so we contact uh, Rolly, and uh, that's how the, the core team of the audio mm. was, uh, was set up. And tell us so a little bit about the, your project before. You worked on a volcano <laughs> visualization. There's I a lot of nature and uh, that kind of in inspiration throughout all of your games. Yes, so tell and uh, us a little I, bit more I about your fascination for volcanoes. Yeah, I, I love volcanoes to a point, but I'm going <laughs> on active volcanoes. So okay. when it's erupting, yeah, I love pretty, that. Pretty <laughs> yes, but uh, I have to, to have to, to keep the right keep distance, it, yeah, stay distance. far. But um, but whatever. Sometimes I see the lava just uh, where you are. And uh, <laughs> that's that it gives really <laughs> striking. Yes, that's really striking moment in my life, and uh, it inspired from dust. And after, it was still a very uh, strong influences. And uh, I met uh, some friends on volcanoes, and uh, one of them, uh, Patrice, uh, he is the di scientific director of a volcano museum on uh, the Reunion Island near um, Madagascar. And uh, we had a, a common vision to create a volcano simulation. So we decided to uh, make this project real with uh, Francois Saï, the GPU uh, coder who was really interesting to create a, a simulation, fluid simulation. and. Uh, so we worked uh, um, almost two years on this on different part of this project, and uh, so at the in this museum you can uh, create eruption and play with the eruption, and there is even a VR uh, VR experience. Uh, mm. Is it is it still on display? It is. Uh, yeah. I'm well, <laughs> sorry. I uh, guess the museum right now is probably shut. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> for now, it's closed. But uh, yes, it's, it's still uh, it's still active. <laughs> and uh, okay. Yes, please. So yeah, let's dive into a bit closer into Paper Beast. Um, so yeah, how did you kind of conceive the game? I guess it's a lot of it has been inspired by. On one hand, you know your explorations in nature and volcanography, but at the same time, it, uh, the game is also about data and our relationship yes. to data and technology and the internet at large. And even now, we are in a simulation. So, um, yes. why did you choose that as the kind of main source of inspiration for the game and the kind of contrast um, between data and and nature? It's really. The um, starting point is an, an inner feeling, because um, there is this first feeling about wildlife and the beauty of wildlife, and especially the beauty of locomotion, because uh, seeing animals or 
talking and adapt uh, is really, really cool. And uh, so the, the representation, with, uh, in VR you can't have very, it's difficult to have very realistic uh, characters. And uh, so using paper is a good way to have a good visual and uh, a nice representation uh, with, with uh, uh, less data, so which means better performance have a good frame rate and um, yeah but something was uh, missing and I have a floating idea in my mind about because I, I wanted to create also a project about the data and uh, they sometimes it's really oppressing with all this data in our real world who receives spam and maybe too many <laughs> too, too many messages sometimes too many ad and so in paper based it's more this feeling that something really real that has been uh, insufflate inside because uh, the connection happens with the paper there is the paper of the creature and um, on the paper you can write data and suddenly it merged as a whole with an ecosystem that is born out of the, the data. And uh, it happens during the first six months of uh, the mm -hmm. uh, creation cycle. And, um, and what is very interesting uh, with this connection between wildlife and the world of data, especially in an artificial world, uh, it's really, um, this world is really surre surrealistic, so there is something metaphorical about how uh, we are as a humankind regarding the, the life and how we can tend to forget this in our uh, current life where in you are inside or flat or but the wildlife there is a we have a strong connection with the or environment and uh, and having a universe that is uh, totally that which is artificial but which is a simulation but is also alive and totally um, disconnect from our world um, is like a mirror indeed but uh, uh, an inside-out mirror, uh, something inverse, and um, and and it gives a poetic meaning. It's it's not something that can uh, um, be expressed clearly with word. Uh, it's what I was talking about. Something that uh, I can feel, and it's like a chord in music. A chord can give you something strong inside you, but it's sometimes it's difficult to express with war. And uh, that was the same kind of, of thing. So, uh, um, yeah, and the creation was really improvised. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of the things, what was my key takeaway when I played Paper Beast is Paper Beast is everything that I love about VR and why I fell in love with this medium at first day because it's it's not something that's spoken it's it's a kind of environmental art and design and the creatures and the kind of feeling that carries through with you throughout the game and also the feeling is kind of even more amplified through the actual sound um, so yeah yes. how many of you uh, actually just quick show of hands how many of you have already tried say, Paper Beast at least a demo. Oh, great! That's pretty, pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, really good audience. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Eric. And can you can you tell us a bit about your kind of design process and also how did you? What was the process behind various level designs and then also choosing to create a sandbox mode? Which, in my opinion, of course, it makes perfect sense for a game like Paper Beast. But what's your process like? Um. Um. So there is a uh, maybe two questions. So one, the process design, right? And why? And mm -hmm. the other one is why there is there a sandbox, correct? Yes. Yeah. 
Is it, is it, uh... yeah, yeah, let's go with uh, those. I, I, will start, <laughs> I will start with the second one, which is the... Mm -hmm. um, there is a sandbox, because uh, on From Dust, uh, I get frustrated to don't have a, a sandbox to play with the simulation. <laughs> And so that's why there is a sandbox yeah. in paper bits to explore more of the systemic aspect with uh, an ecosystem. And for the, the first question about the, crea uh, the creative uh, process, um, yeah, that's mm, there is a different aspect of the creative process. There is. Oh, um, the project uh, has a, a layer of, of, of technical, and we iterate on the technical, like the locomotion, terrain simulation, physics. and physics to build uh, the universe and the, the content of the game. But the scenario and the what will happen into the game was not clearly defined at the beginning. Uh, because uh, if it is too defined, you can uh, uh, close some uh, door, or maybe some door you think that will uh, work, will not work in the end. So uh, by keepi keeping it open, uh, it's easier uh, to... Uh, to design and to, to uh, get advantage of the accident you discover during the creation. So the, d the, the levels <laughs> has been created almost uh, in the order of the game progression mm -hmm. because the adventure is, uh, is linear, so uh, it is uh, easier in that way. And um, so there is a part of improvisation and there is a part of iteration, which are two uh, different uh, concepts that interact together. So you iterate, for example, on a lever to have it uh, good. And when it's good, you freeze it. Uh, of course, you will tune it uh, later, but the main, um, the main content stay the same. And and this way, once it is validated, you can build on the top of it and continue on the next level, etc., etc., mm -hmm. which give a good co coherence, uh, uh, consistency uh, between the, the flow of creation. And uh, yeah, that's, that's something uh, I did uh, um, for another world. So I wanted to do it again for this game. Uh, but it is a, a team project, so it's important that the, um, the team uh, appropriate the project. And it's so also important uh, for me, it was very important to listen what the team is uh, proposing. And, uh, and there is a, an exchange with team member, uh, how and uh, so they were part of the improvisation process. Yep. Quite an organic process then. Mm. Okay, so yeah, let's invite your team now on stage. If everyone could come up here and introduce yourselves and your um, role on the project. Don't be shy. And then <laughs> we, yeah, don't be shy, come <laughs> up. I see Pascal, I see Florian. Uh, Pascal. Is Clement Ooh. here as well? <laughs> 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 okay. And I guess maybe it, it, you could start with Hello. art first, hey. unless you want to start with game design. <laughs> <laughs> I start? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so go on, go on, go on, Pascal. <laughs> You want some que question, uh, Pascal, or is it no? But I can introduce myself. Uh, I meet uh, Eric at Ubisoft on, uh, during the production of uh, From Dust, and uh, it was a great journey, as uh, better this was. 
and um, I, I stay with uh, Ubisoft. Uh, I stay uh, more than ten years, and uh, well, uh, one day uh, Eric say to me, ah, "I would like to make a VR game, uh, etc." And would like I would like to uh, make a, a VR game, but I Ubisoft there is uh, nothing for me, so uh, I leave. Uh, I leave uh, Ubisoft and uh, I join the 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 team. And uh, and the the process it was very uh, exotic uh, <laughs> uh, with uh, Eric, but uh, I love it. It was perfect for me. And uh, my role is to uh, to find a tool to contribute to the project uh, with this this kind of uh, a, uh, iterative uh, way. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, yeah, and I saw, some hmm? I saw some very, very early concept art um, from from Eric, which could have actually been an internal pitch, which was kind of like grey-blue. And then yeah. you came on board and you brought in pink and all these vibrant colours. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> the one with the uh, blue rock and... Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Ah. Uh, it looks like a yeah, kind story. of like a like a dead volcano <laughs> in the original <laughs> concept of one of the scenes in the game. Uh, um, mm, I don't I don't see it. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, there was there was this picture that Eric uh, showed off at w- last week's talk, if you remember, Eric. Okay, I I show um, a picture a uh, of of sky. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then kind of grey rocks. Yes, yes, okay. Just, just, uh, and, uh, yes, and for the, the sky uh, with the uh, picture of a uh, baby inside yes. uh, mm-hmm. the mother uh, yeah. for the cho- choice of a color. Yes, okay. <laughs> I see. Um, yeah, and that looks very uh, different I, I, from what I, we can I see, see in the game this now. Picture. <laughs> Yeah, but I I start to make this kind of uh, of sky because uh, Eric uh, told me this is a sky, this is a AV sky, a letter inside, etc. So I made it, and uh, we have in the beginning of the game this red carpet, like in the theater. But for me, <laughs> it's like a, a bus. Mm-hmm. So I start to look at uh, at color, and uh, I remember this color from the. I know in, in English, but uh, when you are, you are in, inside the belly of your mother... Yeah. In the womb. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. Womb. Well, and this is a kind of, yeah, the co- this kind of uh, color, mm-hmm. uh, orange, the color uh, blue, of the sky. Yeah. blue for the vein, etc. And uh, this kind of light. And uh, I try to re- uh, remember like this. And one day uh, I make the, the rock and I put it in blue. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was uh, catastrophic for the, all the team. Why you put the rock in blue? <laughs> uh, you're crazy. <laughs> uh, Man, no, it's, it's cool. <laughs> hey, rock blue in here. And, uh, <laughs> and finally, <laughs> the, the beauty is that Eric he, uh, let me uh, do the rock blue and after we build on it and. Uh, it was uh, just an, an anecdote, but uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, very representative of the of the production of the production because we iterate like this: uh, this word, this is image, this is sound, and we uh, uh, we play ping pong each other to to build build this world, and uh, mm. after the 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 world step by step uh, is. It became uh, at us and mm-hmm. uh, be- began uh, uh, totally. Uh, uh, it's here. It's uh, credible. Uh, yeah. It's paper based. And in, f- in uh, fact, yeah, the, the environment and the art um, that tells the story that kind of gives away a bit of the narrative as well in the game. Mm, yeah. And then tell us so a bit uh, about the creatures and the physics behind the creatures. So who who works on on that? I uh, we're not here. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, Seb is not here. He was Seb uh, was uh, supposed know. maybe to be here, but so I, I will speak. Uh, I can speak uh, yeah, a bit sure. uh, of uh, the. 
the, the algorithm. So um, all the creatures are made of um, physics uh, constraints, uh, like may, uh, distance constraint, constraint for the, the leg and the body and the neck and head. And then it's um, uh, very some mesh are uh, added on each segment. So the it's like uh, a puppet, and you can uh, if, mm. if you just have a physique, it will be like uh, a bit a rag doll. But you have uh, an, an algorithm that uh, um, manipulates all the uh, point position of the of the leg, of the um, hip, and. and um, and the algorithm is always looking for uh, the for the, the equilibrium to have a so the first goal the first iteration was is having an animal that stay on its leg and don't fall so we apply force when it starts to lose equilibrium on one side we just give a force so that it can uh, stay on its leg and then we have a uh, for the motion, the, the locomotion, we have a gait uh, to animate the leg depending on uh, the cycle. And the we have a, a theoric theoretical position for the, the animation. And so there is a force that is given to uh, this motion, and sometimes we stop the forces. When, it's, it's when, for example, the leg is now starting to uh, go near to reach the destination, uh, we can um, just leave the forces and keep only the equilibrium and give something uh, uh, really natural because we are, we are looking how the environment is and we are choosing the, uh, the, the, the closest point to the theoretical destination and uh, this is for each leg so if you hold as a player a leg uh, the leg will, will try to move and the other too but because everything is trying to adapt uh, every frame uh, it gives a, a very uh, it feels really alive and uh, mm -hmm. there's a weight as well so sense of weight. Yes, and uh, so yes, we have the weight. Every point has a, a mass, so uh, uh, we have EV creature, and uh, we can have more um, a body which is more EV. Uh, so when the animal is moving, there is more disequilibrium, and we can set up tune the the forces, so we can. Uh, in some level, you can see a uh, weak creature, and they are close to uh, their disequilibrium point, and uh, and we play uh, with this. And the cool thing also is that depending of the um, the surface, if it is uh, slippery, for example, the animal will apply its motion mm. to work, its locomotion. And but when the step is on the ground, it starts to uh, to move away. And every leg is trying to recover its equilibrium, like us, if we are on the ice, we will start yeah. to, uh, <laughs> to recover. But, uh, and, and but this has been a sensible point because, uh, a difficult point, because uh, uh, we want the creature to uh, fall. And at a point, it was too solid. <laughs> so uh, the creature can't fall on, uh, let's say, ice. And but we want <laughs> uh, we want the creature to fall because it will be it will be more natural. So we have to uh, adjust the forces uh, when it is on this kind of uh, uh, ground. Yeah. So that's <laughs> some uh, word about the, the system. Mm -hmm. Let's also talk about sound because yeah, it, it creates such an atmosphere in the game it, together with the visuals, and it just brings kind of beauty to life so Rolly and, and Florian if you could step a little forward here and 
introduce um. yourselves and also your work process and your how was it to actually work with Eric? He told me some very interesting stories that sometimes a piece of music actually inspired the visuals and the rest of the game and even the game mechanics and vice versa. Florian? Well, thank you very much for you for this invitation. Can you hear me or? Yes, yes, Ryan, yes. No, we can hear you. Yes, yeah. okay, cool. We can hear you. That's fine, yeah. yes. That's fine. thank you. Thank you for uh, this invitation. I feel uh, almost as awkward as in real life, so I guess it's a good <laughs> <laughs> point to start. Good sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good sign. And actually, congratulations also on this day. Um, I mean, this was the whole point with the paper bits as well to create a new space, a new territory that was uh, uh, really different from life, but still you can feel uh, almost at home even if you are a stranger there. And um, uh, about sounds, the, the, the creation of sounds in paper bits, it was a, a real, uh, well, the first time for me as I come from uh, radio and art, uh, sound art creation. So I had to challenge all my uh, way of writing with sounds uh, <laughs> to, to start creating for, for this world because nothing is linear, everything is dynamic. And uh, obviously, I had the chance to work with the uh, a very open-minded uh, creator like Eric and uh, <laughs> an amazing, uh, an amazing integrator like Clément was always a good advice. And uh, there was a kind of uh, obvious, uh, uh, obviousness. Uh, can we say that in English? Obviousness. It was absolutely <laughs> obvious that <laughs> we we had to work with uh, with Rolly, uh, who has such. Um, uh, a visceral and organic way to to make sound, to produce sounds and music, and it was, uh, I, was I, mean, I mean, it's so inspiring for my uh, own way to craft sound. It was just so obvious that it was the perfect person for that. So uh, Eric was totally right when he said that we had the the, the, the perfect match <laughs> with uh, all of this team, and. Uh, Actually, my way of producing sound for radio is really uh, completely in tune with the animal world and uh, mm. the soundscape. I'm really uh, passionate about um, um, environment and uh, bioacoustics and stuff like that. So it was really, really interesting to take all the rules of the natural world and try to transpose and uh, uh, create a mind-bending experience. Um, you know, just to uh, try to um, to move uh, and lead the player on the edge of what was natural and what was not, and uh, always try to um, um, try to yeah to to blur the boundaries between what is your head, what's inside the world, and. Uh, yeah, I guess this this idea of blurring boundaries in uh, between music and sound design, between natural and artificial, between what's in your head and what's in the game, it was a yeah, kind of focus in and uh, yeah, a kind of horizon that we fo try to follow, I guess. Florian, mm -hmm. uh, can you speak maybe uh, a bit of uh, the uh, all the material you use to create the, the sound? Oh my god, there are so many <laughs> hours of recording in my studio. Um, by the time we uh, recorded the, all the sounds and the material, I was uh, living in Montreal. And uh, I was in this huge flat and a little studio there. And I think I was such a mess with everything what that was in my fridge uh, and <laughs> with many, many papers, papers uh, pencils, cardboard, <laughs> uh, stamps, everything that was connected to papers and stamps and and this, uh, I, yeah, I recorded hours, hours of material, tried to uh, uh, work on uh, the very small stuff to uh, to give a sense of uh, immensity and stuff, and stuff like that, and create textu textures that was really unheard of, that was really my point. Uh, and sometimes to create uh, uh, this feeling of uh, unknown and totally new stuff, you just have to uh, um, displace things. And the most 
the, the, the biggest explosion you will hear in, uh, in, in the world actually can be just a way to manipulate the, the microphone. <laughs> and so, yeah, just really a, a question of movement and displacement, permanent motion. Uh, uh, the way you, you can change scale is really, really interesting with sounds. You can create illusions that are really uh, uh, fascinating with that. Yeah, and true immersion as well. And mm. did you also go to nature, record sounds of like wind and, and water? Yes. Yeah, I actually I get uh, <laughs> I already had a lot of uh, record oh, okay. uh, recording in, re in in my car in my archive, mm -hmm. but uh, as I was in in Montreal, I I had the chance to <laughs> have a lot of <laughs> soundscape to to record around and, uh, and stuff like that. And but there are some winds that are there's a lot of lakes yeah. in Quebec, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that is a lot of, of lakes, forests, and, and the uh, not so many deserts and sand, but you can find some evocative sounds. You can simulate and um, actually I use the, you know the stuff where the, the cat pees and <laughs> to emulate the, the desert sometimes <laughs> for the sand. Mm -hmm. And how did you work with Rolly and also Pascal? So the visuals and the music and the sound all come kind of seamlessly together. Um, actually, I think it was quite intuitive and uh, uh, based on instinct and uh, mutual uh, understanding. I just love uh, the uh, Rolly's work and I've been uh, following uh, all his, uh, his music in the past. Not maybe the beginning, but quite a long time actually. <laughs> so it's kind of infused with this, uh, uh, with this way of uh, you know power uh, in its music. Uh, this very strong and abrasive energy that I really love. So actually, it inspired me and uh, uh, it allowed me also to 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 be uh, uh, more sweet than what I can be <laughs> usually <laughs> because I knew that he, 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 he would have this uh, this powerful uh, 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 this powerful approach and conversely sometimes he was really sweet <laughs> uh, r uh, sweeter than expected and so I could you know push, uh, push the, the, the power and, uh, and stuff like that so it was kind of intuitive and really instinctive um, uh, balance between us and um, well with Eric it's always a kind of um, um, guest, a permanent guest <laughs> and uh, for <laughs> but I think we're quite uh, in tune I mean uh, it's not uh, a pure, uh, a pure you can chance feel that, that Intuition yeah, I think there as well yeah, there's, there's something that that very uh, organic that goes about it. Re yeah, that goes really beyond the words actually because uh, we are I'm, I'm not really um, killed with words generally speaking. So probably that's why I'm I use so yeah, much sound. And, uh, <laughs> and by hearing uh, some, uh, it's hearing some sound give uh, some uh, ID and uh, it's really um, the real. Uh, Creative uh, matter that uh, material that is uh, also the communication uh, made. Yeah, this is what is what is really stimulating with Eric and uh, and Rolly. They, uh, I can bring some sounds and say, okay, here's the uh, the energy and the the feeling I want to to give, and I know that there will be some kind of reaction, and so we can go way beyond the words actually and. Uh, have this uh, kind of mutual understanding that is so rare and so precious to me uh, and this is the same with the, the colors and the textures that Pascal uh, uh, could, uh, could show me and, uh, and it's the same with the guy that was crawling uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 the pepper, <laughs> the, pepper beef, the red pepper beef <laughs> over there <laughs> because it's he, he Where's he? Where's he? Actually, just, just behind you. And, yeah, he's Rolly, and at what point <laughs> did you come on onto the project? Um, 
I think um, relatively near the beginning of the process, um, I mean, they were developing, I mean, as Eric said, he'd been working on it for some time, but the, um, when I first came on, there was only the outline of the first sort of level and a half. So as Eric was saying earlier, we kind of, it was built uh, you know, piece by piece in a kind of um, like chapter, chapter by chapter, which worked really well. It was really exciting to see the whole thing kind of unfold as the world, the sound world, kind of took shape and, and formed. Um, but uh, as Florian was saying, uh, uh, for me, this was the first time I worked on a game and the first time I worked on a VR project so I was just so lucky to have not just the kind of emotional uh, support and freedom but also the technical support from Clermont and from Flemi uh, Florian um, you know there was no because there was quite a lot of uh, it's quite a big learning curve it's very different from composing for film or you know, any of the other work that I've done where it's very linear um, and yeah, getting the technical support with that was really amazing uh, all the way through. And uh, what I really love um, with uh, the way uh, uh, we work together is that you, you wrote some sketches for the first level, but the scope was outside this first level, and it gives uh, some uh, inspiration uh, yeah. for the design and the story for, for uh, yeah. what is happen uh, next and. Uh, so, yeah. But the world, really so, I mean, it. in all of the uh, other VR experiences that I've been in and games that I've played, in games where, um, you know, trying to replicate an environment like this uh, is very different, and you still kind of, um, you know, the experience of wearing the headset and, uh, and the difficulties of, um, you know, sort of streamlining your setup so that you get a smooth playing experience, all of those things kind of still a bit of an inhibition in enjoying virtual games or virtual experiences but the first time I went into Paper Beast it just felt the whole world felt so coherent um, that it really kind of uh, it was easy to you know it was easy to know what was right and what was wrong really early on uh, from a kind of sonic mm -hmm. point of view. Clemon and was your role to kind of bring every everything together on the project? Uh, well, not everything. Uh, I was just uh, working <laughs> on audio, but uh, it was mm -hmm. still uh, a very big uh, piece of cake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a piece of cake? <laughs> no, it was uh, no, it uh, uh, really <laughs> easy. <isn't it? laughs> no, I mean, I mean, it was uh, a really uh, a lot to chew, uh, I mean. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, this was uh, representative of how uh, sound was uh, important on this project. Um, and uh, I, I knew that uh, sound for VR uh, would be more uh, important and uh, crucial than for flat screen experiences. But uh, it was really, uh, really huge uh, on Paper Beast. Uh, we were uh, three working almost full time for uh, three, three years. Uh, just on the audio of the game, and uh, and I, I don't think it was it was too much. I, I think it was perfect, but uh, it really shows uh, the power of sound in VR. And uh, and it, yeah, so my job was to integrate and program the audio behaviors of the beasts and uh, the interaction, uh, uh, the, the behaviors of the sound and uh, of the music, and um, and it was really. Uh, pleasure because uh, I just had all this raw material of uh, wonderful sound and uh, wonderful music coming uh, every day and I was like okay how uh, where are I, am I going to put this and uh, yeah it was really it was really fun uh, really hard also but uh, yeah it was <laughs> okay I wonderful feel sorry for her, uh, actually yeah. <laughs> You literally just finished a build or something and then I just then <laughs> like no 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 wait 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 one minute and then send a whole lot more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, let's open it um, to the audience for maybe one or two questions before we welcome the next speakers. Yeah, does anyone have a question? Yeah, I got a question. Okay, yeah, Jason. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's well, go a little what... bit forward here. So what are uh, uh, any plans for DLCs, updates, a second game? Any What's what's future look like? Uh, Very good question. For now, the future is uh, quite uh, blurry. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we. <laughs> I, hear that. I don't. I don't know yet. Uh, uh, it's really. Uh, it's too early. Uh, to. We don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fair enough. Actually, the, the creatures keep keep evolving in the world, so we maybe uh, mm -hmm. they will do us some surprise without us knowing. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be cool. Have you considered <laughs> multiplayer mode for the game? Uh, no, uh, player is uh, another level of complexity. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it would work mm -hmm. for the game? Um, for um, for another game, uh, for Paper Beast, uh, um, well, the design needs to be really uh, with uh, a multiplayer mm -hmm. aspect. So. I never thought of uh, paper beast <coughs> like this, so but uh, yeah. there's probably something to do, but uh, I don't know. Any any further uh, questions? No. From anyone? Yeah, Roberto. Go Me? Uh -huh. Hi. Um, how did you balance at the beginning of the game uh, the element of being scared by the by the creature? or trying to befriend it because it's normal in games you start a game and every animal is an enemy you need to shoot it and kill it and hmm. it comes kind of natural at the beginning to be scared but then you learn to trust the creature could you please explain explain more about this process yes um so um mm, the, at the beginning, there is two creatures. There is the giant one mm -hmm. and this. Yeah. And uh, the giant one is uh, is scared of you and uh -huh. uh, go away. So there is no. Uh, there is a distanciation that is immediate between mm -hmm. the player and uh, yeah. this creature. So, uh, and before this creature come back to the player uh, mm -hmm. there is this small uh, kind of uh, crab creature yeah which uh, some player uh, was a bit uh, scared by this uh, creature but i uh, was scared hmm? <laughs> you were, i you was were scared, scared by that creature scared yeah. of the crab yeah <laughs> but <laughs> once you once you hold it and you you see yeah, it you learn with the <laughs> tape recorder. It doesn't mm -hmm. interact with the player. And uh, mm. I think that because the player has no nobody, uh, there is mm -hmm. no uh, no uh, something yeah. real about aggression. You can't be up because mm -hmm. you don't have a body. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, it's, it's a time where the player um, Apprivoiser, uh, Florian, if you said. Tame. Maybe taming, taming the, the taming, creature. Taming, yes. You tame mm -hmm. the creature. Yeah. Get, get familiar. But when the... Yeah, get familiar. Yeah. Get familiar with the creature. And when mm -hmm. the big, the giant creature is coming mm -hmm. back, uh, she gives something to you. And it is uh, absolutely not aggressive. It is really something, yeah. uh, an action of sharing. I think it, it is important for the player. Yeah. I it makes the player understand uh, there is no aggression with. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, but I, I saw. It, it was a, a great take actually for the throughout the, the the game because uh, how you could bond with these creatures without feeling threatened it was also a, a question for for them as well and the yeah. fact mm -hmm. that they do not uh, really look at you generally they don't you don't have this eye contact uh, with the creature uh, I think mm -hmm. it helps to f not feel threatened and uh, we, we we had a lot of uh, discussion about uh, 
how to translate into sounds the the um, uh, the eye contact that you don't have. How does it translate into sound? And well, we don't have any answer yet, but I think <laughs> we uh, we can we, we can um, point the fact that the, the, there is no eye contact and still you have a bond, and it's really important, uh, even if not uh, like in real life. For for instance. Yes, that's a good point because um, most of the creatures uh, mm. don't look at the player. Only uh, the creature that has a more uh, elevated state of conscience, <laughs> mm -hmm. like uh, yeah. the giant one, like the paper mm -hmm. strip, or mm -hmm. the, the tape, the black tape creature. Mm -hmm. These ones are looking at the player, but uh, the other one almost never, and uh, mm -hmm. it give a. It's really a choice because uh, we try to have the all the creature looking at uh, the player and there's something already uh, uh, if it's too much you don't feel uh, really uh, good because uh, uh, it's not an aggression but uh, it means that you have you are more important than the rest of their environment, mm -hmm. and uh, if you want to have a game that is that is speaking about wildlife, it's important to see how they behave in their uh, in their place. Wow! Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's a day. joke. <laughs> it's oh. a Drink no my hey. today, Hi Eric. Really in. I can Hi. <laughs> um, actually, How are you? So that, uh, Pretty you good. Have... I'm really happy to have made it here. Because... Oops, sorry. Oh, my yeah. attempt to jump yeah. on the bar. That's, the place is really have, nice. Um, um, Jason and team here, just for that last question. And then sure. all of the speakers, if you could kind of be behind yeah. the bar so we see you. And then we can ask you questions, and you can pretend you're bartenders if you want. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Eric, I'd like whiskey. <laughs> I'm not yeah, gonna I say that anyone, actually. Anyone Eric, anyone you have questions. a question to to Jason and you and Mike. So yeah, yes. let's go with uh, Eric's uh, question. Um, so and I'm gonna sit down here. My question is um, <laughs> about the development team. Uh, you said you're uh, six, seven. Uh, right. Yeah, and, with uh, the core. Um, yeah, the core is six seven, how? and when we, you know, as a contractors, we we were like um, in the beginning, that. like ten to fifteen people. We worked, but as a very core team, we're um, six to seven people. That's how amazing. Okay, was. so you have um, uh, the over part of the team is uh, outside a contractor, and uh, for, um, for for. Which kind of work is it for uh, the graphic assets or the programming or the audio? Um, all of the programming is done yeah. internally. Uh, we've okay. used some uh, external contractors to help with uh, creating facial rigs and some complex animation uh, type work, <laughs> which is a little bit outside of uh, what we knew how to do. Um, but for the most part, um, anything that's related to music uh, is handled in-house, and definitely all of the internal coding is handled by our team. Yeah, and uh, and okay. the, the character and character design uh, and um, the character art, the uh, all the like most of the uh, assets and the environment uh, design, and uh, um, the creature creature designs, the creature rigging, all of them done in-house. And okay. and and we also did our own um, mock-up session, and 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 um, so the time that last year we just uh, we decided um, to do in-house a uh, mock-up and facial uh, capture. So we work with Xsense, uh, uh, Xsense suit, and uh, Facewear Facewear technology uh, to um, and do uh, two days of um, uh, two days of six-hour session with uh, um, five to six actors to. Um, Captures mm. um, are acting, mm -hmm. but also they um, almost most even got it right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the most okay. of the the um, the the 
mocap um, mocap data and the facial data um, the, then then we um, we basically taught ourselves to um, put the animation in house so most of the most of the animations are, are done um, done in house but the, um, the the character the two main characters that in in this chapter is done by um, one uh, contractor uh, that um, we were working uh, we just met uh, over online mm -hmm. and then um, the uh, our uh, our friend his name is Brav um, he created the um, the the high the this uh, Allegra character and the Babaton character at the end that you go you guys are going to see when you play the game. Um, and so he created the, the facial rig, um, but the, all the animations are done done in house. Okay. And the programming team is uh, how many programmer are, are you uh, in the team? Zero. Uh, we do everything in Blueprint. Zero. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. uh, there are two of us yeah. that uh, are responsible for core systems uh, integration. But um, technically, none of us really know how to write code in C++ or okay. C# -sharp or anything like that. So we're, we're fully blueprint. Oh. So you, you, you use the blueprint to create the logic. And was it uh, one of the reasons you choose uh, Unreal instead of Unity, for example? Yeah. Um, so me and Jamie, who uh, were part of the technical team, we were working in Unreal Development Kit before Unreal Engine 4 came out. And we have been producing games mm -hmm. for you know tw twenty some years using EDK. So uh, okay. with the Kismet system, it was very easy for us to go from Kismet into Blueprint, and uh, a lot of the other pipelines from EDK into UE4 are very very similar. So we just kept going and uh, fell in love with the engine. Uh, the good news is we started mm. with 4.1, back when you used to have to pay subscription. <laughs> but uh, what that's allowed us to do is to see each new incremental feature uh, added to the engine over a long time has given us a quite a, a bit of knowledge on what's possible in Unreal Engine 4. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I like how Pascal is butter. Any other questions? Any further questions, and also to other people, to Jan I do and, have a question, and, and but I'm too shy to ask yeah, it. Or... Where did the French guys go? Oh, I think they're still down. They were, yeah, yeah, I think they were talking about it. Yeah. Still, they're huge. still down? Everything's so polished. Yeah, yeah. they're down like, here. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Bye-bye. Alright, salut. Bye. Hey, can I ask you a question about the paper beasts? Yes, sure. Um, do you have you heard of this uh, Dutch uh, artist named uh, Theo Jensen, who makes these uh, creatures out of pipe uh, and puts them on the beach uh, yes. and they ki kinetically uh, yes. move? Yeah, I, that was the first thing I saw uh, when I saw your game. Uh, I was wondering if you drew some inspiration there, or uh... it has been a reference uh, for uh, for us. Um, and uh, I really love uh, this uh, structure. It's very. I would love to see it in real on a beach. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> full size <laughs> instead of a video. <laughs> but he, the the design is uh, so neat. Hmm. Uh, how are you guys doing the uh, like the IK with the legs, like the movement systems uh, for your creatures? Um, we we develop uh, our physics. Okay. Uh, so um, indeed, uh, the, it's uh, made of uh, distance constraint. It's just uh, an, an, a composition of uh, physics constraint. Uh, it's uh, similar okay. to the joint constraint you can have uh, in a, a classic uh, engine. But uh, we did our physics because uh, we wanted, uh, we need uh, interaction between the ground and uh, to have the whole, um, uh, the whole pipe, uh, the whole physics co uh, communicate well with the GPU and uh, because an uh, animal can uh, uh, let some uh, mark on the ground. 
Yeah, and uh, we have uh, some fur on, on it. So yeah, footprints. We decided to to, um, to do uh, our own uh, physics, and um, wow. it would be possible to do it uh, with uh, uh, physics engine. Engine. Uh, and uh, to oh, drive uh, the, this kind of physics we, with we a locomotion uh, <laughs> algorithm. Okay, well, yeah. Really um, which engine are you four, using? Yeah, four. Um, uh, I mean, uh, you're using Unity. Okay. Interesting. We've been playing around a lot with the uh, uh, specific uh, IK uh, plugin called Power IK, uh, but I think it may be only available for. UE4, uh, but we found it's been very, very po uh, powerful for us uh, because it does like weight shifting. So if you were to pull like an arm of a character one way, his whole body will go instead of just the uh, IK chain itself. Um, so there's some really cool features that we found, um, and we're hoping to use them more in our larger creatures we have. Way, way before yeah. the quest was announced, way before all that, right? And uh, yeah, Unreal yeah. seems uh, yeah. more uh, solid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you need yeah. to uh, of uh, production. To the, to the quest store, so yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, uh, uh, none of our you know, team uh, writes in C Sharp. So, like you had <laughs> so things, for us, uh, Unity would be a little difficult from, uh, to learn quickly, I think. Hard, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. So for that reason, we like Unreal because we can get a lot accomplished with uh, Blueprint, know, so and then uh, when we package the game, we can nativize, <laughs> where it turns the Blueprints yeah, into C++ I mean, for us to, a, to get the mm -hmm. performance. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's that's been our strategy we and why we like UE4. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah, have a lot of experience with Unity, so I, it's hard for me to compare. And, uh, but um, certainly it's, uh, it's a beautiful engine to work with. Yeah, we, we've created some very cool things uh, in VR, which uh, it's always a challenge, you know, for me because uh, as an artist, they always want to have large vistas where, you know, I want to see mountains and I want to see birds and I want all these things. And in VR, it's like, you know, you have to be mindful of performance. <laughs> so my trick is always to try to obscure and to hide uh, as much as I can so that the player only sees so much uh, for performance. So it's, it's, it's always, I I it's always it difficult to, uh, to manage uh, the performance limitation. Uh, and when, uh, when we are designing on the edge of the performance, it's always uh, tricky because uh, it's it's yeah, like a puzzle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 we heard that. That's what. That's why uh, we were like, <laughs> yeah, oh, totally agree. Uh, it, um, <laughs> it, the trick is oh, yeah. to get and to yeah, the yeah, artist yeah. early. <laughs> And Especially not to like, wait you know, until the, they've already um, made things so bad and really try to make it know, better. Push the, um, <laughs> so uh, I spend a lot of time you know, training like these guys on how to optimize meshes yeah, and textures and all those things in advance way, well, as much as possible. It saves me effort stuff, later. But, you know, it's not impossible, yeah. but, you know, I think... And, and what is important, too, is to know uh, the, um, us, the performance of the tool you are using. And when you have a finished engine, it's easy. Uh, in our case, so, uh, with PaperBeast, we develop uh, our system <laughs> yeah. uh, at baking. the beginning, no the first no one, two yeah. years. No, but when yeah. we start yeah. to create the adventure, yeah. like, it uh, was not uh, fully uh, optimized uh, yet. And it's difficult yeah, to know the, drive, um, you know, the, the limits, the the where we, where, um, the, the what are the limits in terms of design, and it's not... It's you not easy. My, my, my strong recommendation, uh, and I feel like I this is what I'm really telling you right now, is like <laughs> love to work like this as much as possible you to have, finish you know, the, like the we, tech we, we into, I, before I to start no. the design. Well, but it's not always possible. Uh, we, we've, yeah, and, uh, I mandate this uh, uh, for us as well. It's, it's um, what we do for new features, we always create a small gymnasium, a separate area that is specifically to work out the feature. And before we put it in the game because uh, you know how it is uh, you, you wind up with a massive pile of assets and you don't know where the best optimizations are um, so when they say hey I uh, would like to have a teleport mechanic or a climbing mechanic we always
always do those um, separately and introduce them to the team in small pieces. Uh, um, so that helps us work out a lot of the performance issues up front. But, uh, it's, it's been a challenge for us. Yeah. Sure. My, my hope is that the hardware gets better faster than we are making the games for them. <laughs> so if uh, yeah, performance is bad it, now, maybe it next year, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, but the quest is for saying that it's fine. Uh, when, when we, when we, Since 30 years, uh, everybody is uh, saying that because, but uh, yeah, be uh, we are never happy of the uh, next performance because uh, we will. Uh, yeah. oh, there be, is yeah, a tendency should, to go uh, we should to, to reach the limit. Um, I mean, also always if you want to give me the limit of what we can right do, now, just in case and I can uh, also, um, try to type I'm sure for the next generation, yeah. with a uh, new so graphic card and having some ray tracing and. Oh, that's a cool, but N? it's so it will demand okay. a lot of power, and we okay. will not use the, um, the same rendering as today, maybe, Q and or we will want more physics, Q or I don't know. And e that's that's so not easy e as a designer to say, oh no, e yes, we don't, we will not use uh, okay. e all this. We want to to stay in the comfort uh, area. <laughs> And uh, for example, uh, create a, a, 2D, studio, a 2D game, uh, game uh, pixel art. Today, there is no problem of uh, performance, and it will be easier, I think, to, to work with uh, a design on this kind of technology. Just in case but, yeah. I, have uh, I think yeah, it helps sure. to have uh, <laughs> men like us that are a little bit older Joy that uh, have the come or... from the Commodore yeah. 64 yeah. days place, <laughs> up, so you know, um, because uh, back when we were uh, modifying yeah, like Doom and, this, and so, I mean, all these old Quake I'm, games, I'm, I guess now you know, you had to be very, very careful with uh, how you so put a game together. And I think those techniques still apply. Like I say, if you if you fall in love with all the features, you're going to quickly make the game that can't be playable by most of your audience. Um, so yeah, I, I don't find, uh, I think we're a dying day, uh, breed though. Uh, uh, I don't think there's now. as many folks nice, that came yeah, from like a been, modding uh, community you, because not struggling with it, but it's, uh, it's definitely an when, acquired, uh, when did you start this uh, game? Uh, you know. um, I, my first uh, modding experiences were probably with uh, Duke Nukem, the original, <laughs> back the, like okay. I said, uh, <laughs> in the early 90s. Um, my, my personal favorite game was a, a game called Descent. It was a six degree of uh, freedom flying space game. I remember all that came out. It, it came out about the same time that Doom did. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. how I actually met these guys, uh, we did a recreation of Descent uh, using Unreal, uh, or UDK. And uh, the audio director on this team was helping me make sounds for that game. Uh, it was a... Um... David Perry, who it was uh, the company, uh, was um, the, I'm not the game is called uh, well, which they Soul so Contingency. Which company? Um, yeah, uh, the oh, game yeah. we made was <laughs> called uh, Soul Contingency. Uh, okay, so like, um, we wound up we getting sued by Interplay. <laughs> <laughs> the company has like one lawyer and that's it. <laughs> they don't make games anymore, but they still sit on the uh, IP. Yeah. So yeah. We, we had to spend a lot of time to. Uh, we, we were doing it as fans of the game to try and do a, a, like a rebirth. Um, but there were other companies that went and bought that IP. So like Descent Underground is currently owns uh, the IP, but uh, the original developers of that game now just put out a game called Overlord. Uh, and so there's many many versions of that type of game out there so I wanted to switch to a project that was more creative and, and different and I didn't see a lot of other music games like this one uh, and certainly uh, the challenges are quite a bit different it's easy to make a, a, a space shooter game it's more difficult to make a game that has no shooting at all <laughs> I think you know yes. <laughs> exactly I understand oh, thank you for answering my questions uh, it's good to meet you guys as well. Thank you. Uh, yes. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm muted my, my mic. No, I was saying uh, this is a question uh, you should ask a technical I have a lot of... Uh, how we do it. Yeah. How they do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing very nice. Interplay suing fan projects. That just makes me mad. 
it's not that great. Yeah, so I'm just gonna have to get there with my <laughs> Thanks for coming! Hi. Thank you so I much for having me! I love your stream! It was so cool. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you liked and it! You know, actually, when you were streaming, it was kind of a soft opening night, and there were so many people coming I didn't expect, actually. And our video player was too loud. Oh yeah, that surprised me really was, bad. Yeah, I, I was telling people like, oh, I'm so sorry, please decrease your... Uh, it was, you know, first time we launched the world, so we had to do some tests and... We, we did testing before, but you know how it is. It's just, well, uh, this is also our first world. really early for me like, getting yeah, into you're... VR chat as well, so... Like, this is my first real experience actually talking. Ah, oh, really? nice. <laughs> oh, nice. Like, I'm no, usually I shy, so I just keep my mic muted. <laughs> All right. You need to, you know, you need to find a community of people you like. Yeah. 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 My friend's and making me an avatar, like so I'm is... probably gonna make me feel better. Ooh. Yeah, it's my favorite video game character, oh, nice. so I'm super excited about that. Oh. Which one? Which one? Can you tell us which one? <laughs> All right. So you guys know Eric Shahi. He's here, right? Obviously. Yes. Uh, so yeah. he made another yeah. world, and then after another world, yeah. he made a game called Heart of Darkness. And I am obsessed yes. with yes. this game. Yes. So my friend's it's making so me an avatar of Andy. Yeah. You, you, you should, you should talk to Ch Eric. Hi. Hi. Mr. friend is making him an avatar based on another world. Oh no, it's Heart of Darkness. <laughs> no. sorry. Yeah, I'm getting an Andy avatar. <laughs> You're cre we are creating uh, an indie avatar. Nice. Yeah, my friend's making it for me. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> and uh, I would love uh, to see it. Uh, please share it uh, to me uh, when. Uh, oh, I'll definitely show it off. Yeah. It be You'll be the first person to see. <laughs> Super nice. You, when you have it, just uh, maybe tweet to Eric. Oh, yeah. Eric follows me on Twitter, so I'll just tag him. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like I. I was hoping it would be finished before I like really did stuff in VR chat, but it's fine. You know, I don't want to rush my friend. It's COVID. You know. Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to it. You, you need, we need to throw another event where we can show it. Yeah, well, I, I keep saying we need a Paper Beast uh, uh, world here. <laughs> <laughs> I just stay in there permanently. <laughs> yes, really, uh, when uh, I, it would be really cool to set up um, a world uh, about Paper Beast. Yeah, uh, you're, I don't you're in Unity. You made it yes. a sandbox mode because you have the assets in Unity, it's just adapting it to. Oh my god, Eric, can I take you on some world hops? Andre, yeah. we should okay. take Eric on world hops. And I want to show you Udon because in any world, maybe you could make like, you know, so the locomotion system could be interesting. You could utilize the latest tool sets of Udon, that would be good. Okay. You don't, and it can be just something, it can be just something small, you know, if you don't have to yeah. make a ginormous world, well, just something small, mm. like a mini, mm. Mm. mini, mini mode yeah. from Paper Beast. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Udon is like the please. programming language, right? Yeah, yeah, please bring in the radio from the opening scene. You know, you could press the radio and it would play the Japanese tune, I think that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. And then, from, uh, yeah, the Paper Beast themselves would be cool. Yeah. And maybe just the paper bees roam around and they are just animated, like an animation of... Actually, I think a good world to take you to could be... What is it called? Dunes and... Dunes and Moon? Moon, Moon and June? Oh, from Sly. Okay. Yeah, I can take you there. I think that would be a good one. Yeah, yeah. Eric, after the festival, let's... Um, yes, yes, this is Eric, is the game designer and the... the, 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 the there are those yeah, pieces are amazing. I love Hello. Yeah, yeah. Eric, maybe next and, uh, week we should like organize something out. with the with the community yeah, to, to, to show you like uh, some of the kind of best uh, adventure uh, world best here on VR Chat. Yes, I yeah. would be pleased uh, to, uh, to visit. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is fun. I can't even see what my avatar looks like when I'm dancing, but it's still fun. It's so weird because it's like Second Life, except Eric is there. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's like Second Life, but Eric is there. Review of VR chat. I'm, uh, I didn't realize that uh, I'm in the menu of uh, expression, so I just died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna see that. Yes, dance. <laughs> How are you? Uh, you are you in uh, lockdown where you are too? Uh, so I don't have my headset set up yet. So I'm just on PC right now. Okay, but uh, I mean, uh, uh, is there a, a lockdown uh, in your con uh, country? Uh, I, I mean, uh, in France we have a. Uh, a lockdown due to uh, the uh, COVID, etc. Oh, and, uh, it's not an enforced lockdown currently where I am, but you know they're okay. they're recommending. There's like mandatory masks and stuff here in BC, okay. Canada. Hmm. In France, we have a uh, we 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 are in the second uh, lockdown right now, and uh, so. <laughs> So we stay at home, <laughs> mainly. I'm pretty lucky that I live in a place that's like more like uh, distant from like the big central hubs. Like we live in like the north, so it's like mm -hmm. more isolated. But uh, we might get our second wave soon too because a bunch of people came after vacationing. Hmm, okay. So you you, uh, you go often to VR chat? Are you uh, going uh, often in VR chat world, or is it something uh, uh, I mean uh, new for you? Because uh, VR chat is really is uh, really new for me. Before, yeah, it's new for me too. Uh, Rain dance. I didn't know the VR chat, so uh, it's uh, a new world for me. <laughs> I mean, I made an account, I like, I... right when VR Chat was first made, but my computer was like a potato, so I just could never play VR Chat until I got my new computer. Hmm. Oh, who's talking about Heart of Darkness in VR? I heard them. I don't know where they are. <laughs> you... I heard somebody else talking about Heart of Darkness in VR over there, but I don't know who it was. Okay. But that'd be cool though. Like, just bring it back, make it like a VR experience. Oh, you, you mean, uh, 
sorry, my, my English understanding is really uh, a verage. So can you repeat? That's okay, please? I understand. Uh, somebody was talking about Heart of Darkness being in VR, and I thought that would be cool oh, if really? you brought it back just for a VR experience. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Heart of Darkness is a uh, well, it's a difficult uh, game to. Uh, who may come back uh, because uh, many people work uh, on it and uh, uh, but it's true that uh, a remake would be nice uh, but uh, personally I prefer to create a new uh, new game a new original I understand game. that yeah But I mean, it would be cool if you still had like the model somewhere to like port them into VR chat just to make like a little world or something. Yeah, yes, the model. Uh, I could have this on a on a backup somewhere. Oh my god! And uh, but it was a 3D studio. Uh, the first 3D studio, not 3D studio Max, but 3D studio Four, I think. Yeah, 4 was the 1995 one, I think. And uh, of course it would run uh, in real time without any problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be the 3D, uh, easy yeah. to port because it just... Mm. No, it, it's not... Sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, you, you wouldn't have to worry about there being too many polygons. Yes, clearly. Um, I don't know how many polygons there was in a scene, but uh, I think it, 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 it could run at uh, maybe 200 frames per second, uh, for sure. Oh, that'd be so cool if you managed to find those models. Yeah, I should look at it. <laughs> that would be like, that would be worth it, like even if you didn't want to make like a new game or a remake if you're just like here's the models then you know us fans we could like mess around with them that'd be fun mm. yeah guys oh my god guys guys oh my god eric please eric please make this the, the oh, year spot you what is uh, your uh, favorite uh uh, part of uh, Paper Beast? Uh, I really like when you're in the balloon and like you see the shooting stars. That was uh, probably ah, yes. probably my favorite part. Also, uh, I don't know how far our voice can reach. I don't want to give spoilers, but uh, when we come to the moon, when we go to the moon, it made me like super mm. emotional and I started crying and I just stared up ah, the stars you. for like the entire... yeah. Thank you. It's very emotional for me uh, too when I r arrive on the moon. Uh, there is uh, something uh, really special, and uh, because the light is very uh, dim, very low, and uh, it's something that you you can um, really feel in VR because in VR you have a, a limited. Uh, the light could be really low, like in yeah. uh, real life. And uh, it's in the, um, uh, the part in Balloon where with a shooting star, I can tell you how uh, this ID came. I never uh, said it before. So you remember the ball of paper at uh, the beginning of a game where uh, there is the papyrus and you give some... Uh, and you give them can to, yeah. Give some, yes. And um, so when when uh, we prototype uh, in uh, an early time, and uh, this this scene was not existing yet, but we had a prototype with these animals and the, the paper, and uh, we had a, a paper spawner, and I put uh, uh, accidentally a paper spawner very very high in the sky, and there was. No, no clouds. Only, the, uh, only a, a dark background. 
And when I see this ball of paper falling, I have a feeling that it was a shooting star. And oh, say, that's oh, so that cool. would be very, very cool. That would be very cool if uh, there would be a rain of shooting star coming around the player and having all the star in the sky suddenly fall. And uh, and that's the story how this idea uh, come into the game awesome. because of this accident. I love that so much. It was just completely on accident, but then it became like one of the most artistically stunning parts of the game. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very glad uh, uh, it, 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 you, you are sensible to this because uh, it's really the result of an inner vision. I, I, when I saw this ball of paper falling and I can I imagine the the, the scenario and uh, of this situation and I try to make it real well and, you definitely uh, so succeeded it's really a pl it's, it's really a pleasure that uh, to hear that uh, uh, someone like you uh, uh, were sensible to it thanks <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome Well, I mean, I love uh, astronomy. Like, that's like one of the things I was like super interested. Really? Ever hey. since I was really little. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Awesome. You're practic you're practicing. You have a telescope or something? Uh... I used to growing up, but it got trashed, so I haven't been able to get a new one. They're kind of expensive. <laughs> mm, yes. And uh, I love uh, watching uh, stars too. I have a telescope. Oh, that's and, so uh... cool. Yeah. Yeah, I remember and, I used to uh, look at the surface of the moon with my old telescope. I had it when I was like seven. We got it at a yard sale. Yeah. Um, sorry, can you <laughs> just repeat? Uh, we can move a bit because there is the music just. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's near, move. Uh, So when I was seven, that's when I had my telescope, and uh, yes. uh, I used to. It was like it was a really good telescope, considering that we got it secondhand. Uh, I would like use it to look at the mm -hmm. surface of the moon. Uh, the moon is incredible. You can see uh, all the craters, all uh, the, the craters. Yes, yes. I really love watching the moons, the moon, and. Uh, and Jupiter and uh, Saturn are uh, really interesting too. Yeah, they're like because, little stars. Uh, if you didn't know what you were looking yeah. for, you'd be like, oh, those are stars, but no, there are planets. Yeah, there is a big difference <laughs> because uh, if you. The, the star are shining, they're blinking because uh, they are so small that the atmosphere can perturbate the... it makes the, the light of a star because it's perturbated by the atmosphere. But the planets are uh, big, bigger enough and there is not this, uh, this, this uh, blinking effect on a planet when you watch it uh, with uh, your uh, eyes. And uh, yeah, and I, I'm... Uh, I have a project to build a telescope too. I started uh, before uh, creating a paper beast, but paper beast was so uh, abs absorbing that I put it uh, uh, aside. But I will uh, take it, uh, take it, take back its construction uh, this year, next year, I think. So you're building and, uh, a, a physical telescope or a telescope and like a VR experience? Yeah. I, a physical telescope. Oh, that's so cool! Oh, you'll have to show, you'll have to take photos and stuff. That'll be super cool yes, to see. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, when uh, it will be... Uh, I have already some parts, but... Um, uh, I want to do a very light telescope. Uh, with a, a, a big mirror. And... Uh, um, and so so that I can uh, work with it 
and go and see the star where there is no uh, no no light from the city. Just take it and, to uh, the most remote place ever so that you'll have the best shot possible. Yes, yes. Uh, there's a place in Canada. Um, uh, we have it's it's uh, Saskatchewan. It's like big flat land with like nothing for miles, mm -hmm. and like that's the oh, perfect that's cool. place for looking at the stars. Yeah. Yes, it's a dream place to, to watch the star. And yeah, it's so and nice. Even, yes, and even we we just with a, a, a binocular binocular absolutely great to watch uh, the uh, the Milky Way and all the star because uh, suddenly it reveals so many stars when it you know dark place with your uh, own eyes you can see already a lot of stars and with yeah, binocular it's, it's, <laughs> crazy. it's so cool yeah especially when there's no light pollution yeah. I hate light pollution it, like it makes the sky yeah. gray and you can't see hardly anything yeah yeah in Montpellier it's bad we have a lot of light pollution but uh, we don't have to go I was putting my arm like it is a real place on the table. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's not real. And uh, sorry. That's, a, that's okay. Uh, um, yeah, so, but we have to, by doing uh, maybe 20, 20 kilometers from Montpellier, we, can, we start to have a, a dark star where we can see uh, the Milky Way. It's not the darkest star uh, in France, but it's a good, uh, uh, the darkest sky, I mean, in France, but it's a good sky. Ah, it's, I'm, uh, I'm happy that you, you like uh, um, astronomy. It's one, it's one of my special <laughs> interests, yeah. Ever since I was little. Yeah. Ever since. Like, for the longest time. Ah, cool. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really uh, it's curious because uh, here we have already the feeling to be in a party with uh, voices away, music, and... Uh, with uh, all the social uh, dimension of a party, where sometimes uh, you hear too many people around you and you don't hear you well when you speak to someone. And, so you have to go to a, uh, a further off place to and, talk. Uh, yeah, and having, uh, exactly, and having the pleasure of that uh, there is a lot of life around you, uh, even if it's in VR, so, so that's cool. I'm going uh, to see um, uh, uh, over um, uh, Maria and uh, and Joe. All right. And uh, it was so nice to talk uh, to you again. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank that you was so a much. Real pleasure. <laughs> yes, I, ha I hope we will have a chance to talk again uh, in the future. I'm sure. And, awesome. Uh, that was nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank uh, you too. It was really nice to be yeah. here. It's really nice to have fun things to do despite everything, you know? This year's been rough. Yeah. Thanks. See you. Bye. <laughs> Is there anybody down here? Oh my god, that was so fun. I mean, I figured Eric had a thing for astronomy. Like, I was just like, yeah, because of how in sync we were. Like, I'm just like, whoa, did I fall? I fell out of the world. Hello. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hi, my name is Andy, and I'm used to clipping through walls. That's fun. This is like the most socialization I've gotten in like... I don't want to say my entire life, but uh, definitely the past five years. Well, definitely since conventions closed down. Oh my goodness, this has been so fun. Damn it. Eric's making his own telescope. 
Oh my god. I wish I could make my own telescope. <laughs> I could try. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> just, just, like, where, where do you just go on eBay and be like, oh yeah, a uh, really large telescopic mirror, please. Uh, I can't even remember what model my telescope was when I was little. We literally got it at like a fucking yard sale. I remember because it was like, I really want a telescope, but they're like really expensive. It's been so long. <laughs> I should have mentioned how I saw the partial eclipse of 2017. That was the first time I saw a solar eclipse. I'm pretty sure, uh, when was the uh, lunar eclipse that I saw when I was like a little kid and I remember we drove out to the middle of nowhere. It was super orange and that was really cool. Oh god, okay, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> like I was socializing with Eric and um, now I don't know what to do. Like, is it technically over? Can I technically go home? Uh, <laughs> go home? <laughs> Can I technically leave? <laughs> go home. Oh no. I'm gonna go pick up the dog again. I love the dog. <laughs> oh my god. I don't remember being able to pick up the dog the last time. Like, that wasn't something I don't think we could do before. So how do I extend it? How do I how do I like extend the dog? Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, it disappeared. Oh, I can't extend it. I can't move it forward. Oh. But I have the dog. I wonder how how far I can take the dog. I'm just gonna take it down to the. F <laughs> just hold it in front of Eric. Be like, hey, I have this. Alrighty. Yeah, I can just take it here. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so I got the dog here. If I let go of it, it'll disappear and go back to where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna see how long I can hold it for to see if Eric notices. He's talking with other people. I don't want to be annoying. Oh my god. I'm actually trying hard not to cry. Like, I knew that Eric was, like, interested in a lot of the same stuff I was. But just hearing, like, him light up when I mentioned how I'm super into astronomy, I'm just like, oh my god. We are having a moment. <sighs> I wish I knew who was the guy who was talking about Heart of Darkness in VR. Because that was somebody and I don't know who it was. And I want to be their friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, person who mentioned Heart of Darkness in VR. I would like to be your friend. Um, meanwhile, I'm just holding the dog in the corner. Hi, my name is Andy. My hobbies include really liking this dog from the... From the I kind of just want to scream, but I don't want to scream. Okay. I don't want to steal the dog. Oh. Oh, I got... Did I get stuck? Is the dog stuck? The dog is stuck! <laughs> it's the alien with the dog mask. I was just... Oh, Eric. Please go to bed. You need the rest. Thank you very much, thank you so much. It was an uh, amazing thought, really. Fantastic. You got a Moranga mask. Yeah, I love this dog. It's so cool. What what game is he from? Oh, it's, it's from a, an experience that's showing up rain dance. It's called Moranga. Oh no, you dropped it. Oh no. No, um, it's gone. Yeah, it's like a, it's a, it's a social VR platform. Wow. It's not VR chat. They've like built their own social platform. Yeah, it's called Moranga. That's cool. Moranga. It's really neat. All right. All right. <laughs> M-A-R-A-N-G-A. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the dog. When I was, I don't know if you saw the uh, video I did where I was running around, but I really liked the dog. <laughs> and I kept going back to it. 
Oh nice, I actually, I played the dog. You, they're playable characters in the game and I was the dog, so heck, I love oh, that's it too. so cool. Is it like for PC or is it just for Vive and Oculus? Yeah, it's P I don't think they have a desktop build yet. Ah, uh, okay. Um, well, so it's only Vive and... Uh, hopefully they'll come out with a piece like a desktop version because <laughs> I don't technically have uh, well I mean my friend has a quest so maybe I'll start you know but. oh cool oh yeah well I'd, so are you kind of looking to get into VR and you're just kind of on your well I have a PSVR kind of and I was thinking about okay. you know doing be, because there's ways to like you know hack a PSVR to use it on PC so I'm thinking, okay. you know, maybe that. Yeah, I but then, like, uh, I was interested yeah. in, you know, like, the Oculus, but then they're just like, oh, it requires uh, Facebook uh, now. I'm just like, oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the thing yeah, that they're, they're just like, they were, they were like, that, they were like, we're never going to make it so that it requires Facebook. And then this year, they're just like, it requires Facebook. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, it's the thing that happened, unfortunately. It's just the thing that happened. But, hey-ho. Oculus was always owned by Facebook, so they always had our details. Now they're just telling us they do. Yeah, at least they're being nice about it. <laughs> well, yeah, are you, are you coming to the, the future events as well? I I'm haven't seen you around. I'm hoping nice so, yeah. You. It's nice to meet you too. Yeah, almost. <laughs> cool, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Right, I think I'm gonna shoot uh, up as well. Yeah, Alright. But... Bye, everybody. What? What? Nice. I relate with your love of the dog, <laughs> likewise. <laughs> the dog is so good. I, ha I hate to say it, but uh, having Eric's a VR headset is so beneficial for oh. filming. Hello, I cannot hear you, unfortunately. That's a cake. What does it say? Happy birthday, Mar Maria. Alright. Taking the cake. I'm taking the cake. Taking the cake. Oui, c'est juste qui favori normalement. Cake. 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 You can keep it. You can keep it. Guys, I have a friend just came. Come, come join us on the red carpet. Come. Uh, come. T'as as des emotes un peu intéressantes, comme uh, un petit pose. Donc tu peux faire semblant que t'es en full body. Attends, je fais juste ah, ouais, un moment. <laughs> euh, la danse, uh, Come join us on the red carpet. Alright. Alright. Bah, encore plus. Et la cape? <laughs> I've had this back for a while. You know what? I'll rejoin the instance. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to let go of the cake. Mm. <laughs> I think it's stuck. Well, like I said, it's not your fault. It's the art chat. You do these things in the same way. Wait, is that character from Kingdom Hearts? That is a character from Kingdom Hearts. I knew it. One thing I recommend to people is the... Uh, if I take an avatar to the arch... To the arch, it's easy to say. I'm a king! I have an avatar. Where is Rafa? I have 300. Monaco is here as well. It's a little kitty. Monaco, come meet uh, Eric Chahi, the legendary game designer who designed uh. Paper Beast. <laughs> How is everyone sitting in midair? It's called okay. Fluffy Kindergarten, and it's just the cutest world ever. And Eric, I, I, we, we should take you there. Monica, we should take ah, Eric yes, to your yes. world. It is amazing. <coughs> yeah, Eric, come just really quickly. Come. Okay. Just okay, jump into I go. the portal. It's <gasps> very cool. Oh, yay. Oh, no, yay. this is, this is going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to come in, but I'm going to come in and I'm going to bring the cake. <laughs> I'm going to break the cake. The cake won't follow. The cake isn't going to follow. If it follows, I'll lose my goddamn shit. The cake is stuck to the, the VR embassy. It is the rain dance F. I've been here for three hours. Oh, this is cute. <laughs> Super cute. I'll spend an extra hour in the oh. ball pit. 
you, you can play exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can we can we have an adult size bullpen? It, it is the most adorable world ever. Finally, I'm still here. Oh, yeah, Hi. The ship moves. It's it's more than midnight uh, in France, but uh, oh, okay. you should go to bed. Go to bed. You need your sleep. Yeah, yeah. We will. Yeah, this I is can a special this. door. There's a penguin. Hi. Wait, can I pick it up? I went into the wall. <gasps> From the other side. That's so cool. I work on this. Not so shy, bitch. Yeah. Keep doing that. Stop That's killing really my frame rate. And there's a gun? A gun? Maria, uh, I'm going. Hello. I'm going uh, to leave. Start to be late now. And, uh, thank you for pleasure. coming. And thank you for uh, coming, uh, make me coming in this uh, world. It's really nice. I I, la I love a lot the uh, dreamy, dreamy space and with the garden and the star and the giant <laughs> moon behind. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I will be very pleased to uh, discover a more uh, world. Uh, Find a time for next week. Cool. Yeah, we'll do world. Thank you, Ari. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.